Well, this particular piece of polymer is a polyurethane, and it's interesting because it's got three nine millimeter slugs that have been shot into the backside and have been arrested inside that polyurethane. And there's no macroscopic damage, the material hasn't failed, it hasn't cracked even, you can still see through it. So this would be a great ballistic windshield material. And what we wanted to do is find out why this particular polyurethane works the way it does. Experimentally it works, and theoretically no one understood why this particular kind of material, which actually has nanoscale features of glassy and rubbery domains, uh, would be so good at dissipating energy. What we did was to work with model material, a polystyrene polydimethyl siloxane polymer, which has glassy and rubbery components, just like the polyurethane does, but we can uh, control its microstructure at the nanoscale and form parallel layers that are only 20 nanometers a piece thick. And these things form a parallel stack, and it's a sort of an ideal starting morphology. And then instead of shooting a nine millimeter slug into it, we decided to uh, miniaturize the bullet, if you like. So we're shooting a silica sphere that's only three microns in diameter. Human hair is about 50 microns in diameter. So this is like more than a tenth smaller than the diameter of a human hair. So we have sort of a micro bullet that we're shooting into a nanoscale structure. And then after the impact of the bullet, we can go in and cross-section the structure, see how far and how deep uh, the bullet got, and in fact, see what happened to these nice parallel layers of glassy and rubbery domains. They, they sort of tell the story of the uh, evolution of the penetration of the projectile and help us understand on, at the nanoscale what mechanisms are taking place in the material in order for this thing to be such a great, uh, high-performing, lightweight, uh, ballistic protection material. In the microscopic image, you are looking at the actual uh, projectile. Projectile is tiny, tiny, tiny. So its size is about 3.7 micron diameter, uh, silica bead. So on the microscope, you can aim the projectile. And then after aiming, we can shot the laser pulse. By the laser pulse, the projectile can move towards the sample. The, the goals of the research is to be able to develop meta, better materials, lightweight materials for protection. And of course, body armor for soldiers would be one. Um, it turns out that the uh, turbine blades on engines also have very high speed impacts from, say, hail or sand that gets into a, a jet turbine engine. Uh, and satellites uh, up orbiting the Earth. Uh, there are micrometeorites up there, very small projectiles going very fast, and occasionally these impact the satellite and poke holes in it. So being able to develop lightweight materials that have superior resistance to these sort of, uh, I would say, extreme uh, dynamic conditions where the velocities are uh, kilometers per second. Lightweight is, is really a big deal. If this was a piece of steel, uh, it wouldn't perform as, as well as the polyurethane, and it would be seven times heavier.